Hello, and welcome back. Today, we have a wonderful geometry problem. The problem is we have a square that has a side length of 20 units. On the bottom side of the square, we construct two identical semicircles. Here, the key point is that the diameters of these semicircles lie entirely along the bottom edge of the square, splitting it perfectly in half. Next, in the upper portion of the square, we inscribe a large circle that satisfies these two conditions. First, it touches the top side of the square. Second, it touches both the bottom semicircles. Our question is, can we calculate the area of this large inscribed circle? Before we dive into the solution, I encourage you to pause here and try to solving it yourself. Now we are going to solve this. For clarity, let's establish our coordinate system and labels it. First, we label the vertices of our square. Starting from the top left and moving clockwise, we name it A to the top left corner, B to the top right corner, C to the bottom right corner, and D to the bottom left corner. Next, let's mark the center of our large inscribed circle, and we call it point O. Now, we are given that this square has a side length of 20 units, which means the bottom side, C, D, also measures 20 units. Let's examine the two semicircles on the bottom side of the square. Since both semicircles are identical and their diameters together span the entire bottom side of length of 20, so we can determine each semicircle's dimensions. Each semicircle's diameter equals 20 divided by 2, which gives us 10 units. And since the radius is half the diameter, each semicircle has a radius of 10 divided by 2, which equals 5 units. Now, let's focus on the right semicircle and add some labels. We label the center of this semicircle as P and the leftmost point of the right semicircle as Q. Notice that this point Q is also the midpoint of side CD, right in the middle of our square's bottom side. From our radius calculation, we now know two important distances. The line segment PB, which goes from the center P to corner B, and it equals five units. And that's our radius from the center to the right corner. Similarly, the line segment PQ from center P to point Q also equals five units. And that's our radius from the center to the left edge of this semicircle. Now, let's denote the radius of our large inscribed circle as r. We'll use lowercase r for now, and we're going to solve for it. Since this circle touches the top side of the square, the center O must be located at a distance r from the top side. This means the center O is at a vertical distance of 20 minus R from the bottom side. Here's why this is the case. Let me draw a vertical line from point O straight down to point Q. Now, if we look at the left side of our square, we can see it has a total length of 20 units. Now, think about how this distance breaks down. From the top of the square down to the center O, that's a distance of R, because the radius extends upward to touch the top side. And from the center O down to the bottom, this remaining distance must be 20 minus R. Therefore, the vertical distance from O to Q equals 20 minus R. Keep this in mind as we'll use it shortly. Now we're going to apply a fundamental theorem in geometry that is called the Circle Tangency Theorem. And it states that when two circles are tangent to each other means that it touches at exactly one point, then the line segment connecting their centers passes through the point of tangency. Let's apply this to our situation. Since we know that our large circle and the right semicircle are tangent to each other, the line segment OP connects their centers. 
then, according to our theorem, this line must pass through the point of contact. Now here's the key point, is that the length of OP equals the sum of their radii. Do you know why? It is because we're measuring from the center of the large circle to the point of tangency, that is R, and then from the point of tangency to the center of the semicircle, that's 5. Therefore, OP equals R plus 5. And this relationship is crucial for our solution. Let's observe the geometry carefully here. Notice that the line OQ is vertical, means it's perpendicular to the base of our square. And the line PQ is horizontal because it lies along the base of the square. When we have a vertical line meeting a horizontal line, what do we get? Yes, you are right, a right angle. Therefore, the angle at point Q equals 90 degrees. Now we have a right triangle PQO. Let's identify its three sides. The hypotenuse, the longest side opposite the right angle, which is OP. And we just determined it equals R plus 5. The horizontal leg along the base, which is PQ, that equals 5. And the vertical leg is OQ, which we found earlier, 20 minus R. Now here we use the Pythagorean theorem. For the right triangle PQO, the Pythagorean theorem states that the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the two legs. So we can write it as OP squared equals PQ squared plus OQ squared. Now let's substitute our known values. We have OP, which is R plus 5, PQ, which equals 5, and OQ, that is 20 minus R. So by putting the valued, our equation becomes R plus 5 whole squared equals 5 squared plus 20 minus R whole squared. Now we need to expand both sides using the binomial expansion formula. Remember, a plus b whole squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Let's start with the left side. r plus 5 whole squared equals r squared plus 10r plus 25. For the right side, we have 5 squared, which is 25, plus 20 minus r whole squared. Now expand the second part. 20 minus r whole squared equals 400 minus 40r plus r squared. So the entire right side becomes 25 plus 400 minus 40r plus r squared, which simplifies to 425 minus 40r plus r squared. So the equation now looks like this. r squared plus 10r plus 25 equals 425 minus 40r plus r squared. Now let's simplify. First, we can cancel r squared from both sides because it appears on both sides of the equation. Next, subtract 25 from both sides, which effectively cancels the 25 on the left. After doing this, we're left with 10r equals 400 minus 40r. Now let's combine like terms by adding 40r to both sides. 10r plus 40r equal 50r. So we have 50r equals 400. Dividing both sides by 50 and we get r equals 8. So the radius is 8 unit. Now we are going to find the area of the big circle. We know that area equals pi r square. By putting the value, we get area equals 64 pi. And that is our required solution, that the area of the circle is 64 pi. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more interesting content.